hello guys uh, welcome back and today I'd like to talk to you about um, my feelings of m meaningless about life or feeling that life is meaningless maybe not only my life but life in in general is meaningless you know that's that's a big statement to make but it's just my feeling okay so for about 20 oh i was going to say 20 years but more than that you know there's been a this thread going through my life where it started the um well you know i've in the past i've thought you know what's the purpose of life who am i what am i and of course you you don't you don't come up with any answers maybe if you meditate for for years you might come up with something um i don't know um but it's a i suppose i'll just get to the point the fear of death now when i was 9 years old not 9 years of age um i started crying and uh, i remember going to my mum and saying to her mommy why do we have to die why do i have to die you know i was i was sobbing you know i was really crying and she gave me a hug you know to comfort me and she said oh you know it's not going to happen for a long time why are you worried about these things and yeah that kind of comforted me a little bit and i had these visions of you know being in a coffin and what, what would it feel like to be dead even as a nine-year-old i thought kind of thought you know if i put it into words now death we don't know what death is all we know is what life is the the, the feeling of life this experience existence we don't how do you know what death feels like you know it's strange but um around about this in this the same time the same period in my bedroom i saw like a, a kind of like multicolored cloud hovering in the in the top corner of my room and uh, and i called my mum and dad and i said look look there's something there and my parents couldn't see it and it was kind of brownish it had maybe red had it was like hovering in the corner it was the size of maybe two two soccer balls it was just moving around and it was a 3d it was there right and so i I jumped onto my dad. I was, I was um, grabbing onto him, and I, he said he, I was hurting him because uh, I was just squeezing him. I was so scared, and you know, I was hugging my dad, and I can see behind behind him. I said, "Look, can't you see?" I remember saying, "Look, look, look, can't you see? Can't you see?" And remember, remember, my dad said, "No, the son, I can't see, Gerald, I can't see it." And uh, my parents took me to the GP, to the doctor. And uh, the doctor said, they just asked me, you know, what what do I like doing? What do, what do I play with? You know, I play with plasticine. And, but I did used to watch the Hammer House of Horror movies. And I was really into Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, you know, and you know their their battles in the 1970s, all the Dracula films, um, is it Frankenstein, Werewolf, all those. I, I used to love those films, and so my parents made the doctor aware and of the, the things that I used to like, and so uh, he said, "Oh well, tell him to stop watching these films. Maybe I shouldn't have been watching them at that age anyway, nine years of age." Um, but yeah, I used to love those films. And so he said his prescription was stop him from watching these films and then he will see. And I, I didn't see that this, I don't know what it was, this cloud. I didn't see it anymore. It wasn't really, it was just frightening that like there was a cloud in my room and it was, and only I can see it. Well, anyway, um, yeah, that's just something that I noted in that period. You know, I don't know what it means if it's some spiritual thing or some something wrong with my in my brain. 
so this idea this fear of death kind of was always in, in the back burner but you know life got in the way you know and uh, you know I had I had a few, uh, girlfriends um, I did actually go to work for a, a short period of time when I was 16 and uh, I suppose you know because I was happy with my mum and dad I never thought about these things and it's only when now that my parents have gone that I don't have a family anymore don't have a, a partner don't have a girlfriend that I've fallen back onto um, you know the the idea of our, our uh, mortality you know vulnerability or vulnerability and uh, yeah, especially the, the last few few years, my dad's passed away. You know, my my um, my marriage is not so good. So, and and now that you know everything is kind of collapsed, marriage collapsed. My dad passed away, and I've got no more family. I've got my kids, but they're too young, you know, to understand. My daughter's only eight. My son, sorry, my my son's eight, and my daughter's um, twelve. And my other daughter, she's sixteen. But you know, she doesn't. Um, you know, she's a, like the, in her those teenage years where she's rebellious and she doesn't really. We don't communicate that much. Yeah. So. Yeah. So going back to my point about meaningless of night of life the way i see it is that i'm going to say something that maybe is i haven't really said it because i know if i say this people will think you're crazy you're really crazy how can you but i, I have to say it i mean this is like therapy for me so i'm just saying it i know i'm going to be ridiculed and people are going to say what, 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 what a nutter but that's what I am maybe not a nutter but this is what I am and uh, I'm I'm not going to hide who I am just because I don't fit in uh, with society you know why should I I've I've um I've avoided this for a long time and I don't think I've even said this to a therapist you know well anyway I, f I feel that life is meaningless because you're going to lose it all anyway because you're going to die and so all your achievements the houses that you've you know acquired all the gold or you know money in the bank is all going to be it's all going to be gone um i mean you're going to be gone so you can't um you can't utilize it you can't use it and the worst thing about this is if i feel, now that i have children and i love my kids just the thought of them dying just like breaks my like just 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 breaks my heart into so many pieces so i feel like i know and this is the the cringe bit right cringe bit coming right cringe alert i feel that i want to create i want to save them i want to create an elixir of life that can either extend their lives for hundreds of years or create a, an age arresting drug that will stop them from you have a choice to die basically if you want to die you stop taking the drug if you want to live you take the drug you can still die accidentally of course but you know uh, technically immortal not immortal but technically if you if you're in a if if you're in a certain situation certain circumstances are met certain not circumstances certain um, um, 
criteria is met, you don't die. Anyway, so that's my nutty idea. And, uh, you know, there's so many nutty ideas and crazy ideas that I feel that this is nothing compared to some things out there and some things out there that are actually acceptable. So I'm coming to think that my idea is not that crazy. I'm not not harming anybody. I'm not uh, asking for any help. You know, I don't know. I'm just this is just my idea, and I feel that going back to meaningless of meaninglessness of life or life having no meaning. If I think, uh, if I think about death, then I think there's no point to life because you're going to lose everything. And that's one way you can actually love somebody to know that that person will be gone one day. You know, sometimes I used to get angry with my dad or, you know, sometimes my wife or whatever. And I all I had to do is think of that one day they'll be gone. If you think like that, then it's really easy to love. You know, we often take our... And I, I probably... I definitely took my parents for granted. And the fact that I was happy, I took it for granted. I found out, you know... I'm finding out now... That the love of... In my case, the love of my parents was so powerful... You know, and they loved me so much and they looked after me for so much, so long. And my dad once said, you know, you're saying, listen, when I close my eyes, then you'll be effed. You'll be in trouble. So he used to just say, look, you have to learn, you have to get a job, get a career, a trade, make enough money and have a wife, children and get organized, get established, so that one day when I'm gone, you'll be okay. That day never came. I mean, my dad left, and I'm still a disorganized wreck. I haven't established any uh, anything in my life. But yeah, so this is why I feel that, for me, my... Uh, I feel that my life is meaningless. There's no meaning. You know, if you think about it, you know, in the in the grand scheme of things, you're you're just like a a speck of um, dust, you know, a speck of sand in the Sahara Desert. You're you're nothing. You know, my cousin once said when he he was going through. Um, uh, cancer therapy, chemotherapy. And he's okay now, but he was saying, "Jero, you know, Jer, that's a shortened name for Jero. Jer, he said, uh, we are. Um, what did he say? Um, we're. I can't remember exactly what he said. He said, said something like something like we're replaceable. We're we're nothing. You know, we're discardable or something like that." Basically, he meant, you, you know, we're nothing. You know, we're here one day, gone the next. And I remember my dad saying something about an auntie of ours that passed away. Her name was Pina. And his words just, just his words just really shook me. Because they're so true. So she passed away. And he said, oh, Pina, Pina. It's just as if you, it's as if you were never here. And I thought, wow, wow. This is so powerful because it's true. Like you're a ghost. You don't even exist. You, yes, you exist. But it's only a matter of time where it's as if you'd never existed. It's, it's mind boggling, you know, it, it's uh, disturbing. For some people it isn't disturbing, but for me it is. You know, 
He said, it's as if you were never here. It's as if you never existed. Yeah. If you have family, they'll remember you. But for how many years? A hundred years? Within a hundred years, nobody will know. Her name is Pina Rizzotto. We'll never know who she was, what she did. You know, it might be in a thousand years time, it might be in a piece of paper in a, in a book or in the computer somewhere. But they won't know what she did, what she liked, nothing, absolutely nothing. And all of us are in the same boat. So what my dad said makes sense. It's as if you never existed. So it's as if we're like walking ghosts. We're all, it's like we're, we're, all, we're all dead already. And you see, many people are probably saying, yeah, no wonder this guy doesn't have any uh, friends. But I don't talk about these things to anybody. I'm just saying it now in front of a camera. And I don't know if I'm going to upload this. So there was a period in China when I was living in China when I used to wake up in the morning and just love to wake up in the morning. I was ready to go. Why? Because I was actually working on, on this goal to create an elixir or something that can extend life. And I used to wake up every morning and, and experiment with certain substances. And, uh, but it didn't go really well. I started suffering from uh, symptoms of neurotoxicity. My brain, I felt really terrible. Um, I was taking this white substance. No, it wasn't the, it wasn't that one. <laughs> A substance that I was actually creating, and I think there were some, there were heavy metals inside it because I didn't test it or anything. I just did, I just read old texts, old ancient Chinese texts, and I was trying things out. And obviously, I wasn't taking cinnabar or you know orpiment or lead or anything like that. You know, I steered or mercury. I I, I tried to steer away from certain you know heavy metals are obviously dangerous but i think heavy metals did actually creep into the uh, solution because i used solutions that are that uh, use heavy metals to create them well anyway i remember one day one night i fell asleep and i had a dream and in this dream i was in limbo i was floating around and i was trying to get to a, a door it was really black and trying to open the door but I couldn't open the door and I was stuck it's as if I was it's not an out of body experience it's as if I was stuck in that dream and I couldn't get out of the dream and it was terrifying and finally I woke, woke up from from the dream and I took the Trans-Siberian back from Beijing to London and I was still taking this this um, potion, this white powder. It was like a slurry, actually. Like a cream. And uh, taking small amounts of it on the train. When I arrived in, uh, in Moscow, because I had to stay there for one night to get my next train from Moscow to, to Poland to, to London, I kept taking it, and I had this really powerful dream. I can hear horse hooves, you know, and I can see frames, different colored frames on top of, you know, picture frames on top of each other and horses riding and making that sound. And it was just so powerful. The the, the sound was, was so loud. And I, I woke up in a sweat and you know what the sounds of the the um, hooves were? My heart going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, that, that was really frightening. So when I when I went to so that tonight I stopped taking it. When I went to London, I wanted to test to see if I had the neurotoxins in my blood, but I thought it was already too late because 
it takes two days to get from Moscow to, to London. So by the time I arrived in London, I was still groggy. But uh, yeah, I think on the third day, um, everything you know dissipated. It, it went down. So I stopped playing around with things like that. And uh, yeah. So I didn't think about like reading those texts on immortality and creating an elixir of life uh, until until recently and so now you know i've been thinking about it again but this time doing it you know more intelligently and uh i've, I've seen i know the mistakes that i made in the past and i probably probably use more you know natural ingredients and you know and, and make sure that i know where the sources of these ingredients come from not just buying it something on online and then before i take this potion actually go to send it off to at least see if there are heavy heavy metals inside to see you know if you if there is lead or mercury or other heavy metals that will affect your brain so there it is there's my video about why i feel that life is meaningless you know i know like people are saying probably say yeah you, you set yourself up to fail because you you know everyone's gonna die but if you have that in your head, you can't change. You can't change who you are. I've had that this since I was a child, and no matter what anybody says, you know, like you're an idiot, you're crazy. I am what I am. I can't change. You know. Yeah, of course, people can change, but they can't really change so much. So, anyway. This is why I feel that life is meaningless. So, I don't know. Do you guys have any... None of you are probably... Probably none of you will have the same kind of crazy way of thinking or crazy thought that I have. But, uh, you know, there may be one. There's always one, as they say. So, give me a thumbs up, please. And probably most of you are going to give me a thumbs down. And uh, share or like or subscribe. If you want to hear more of my uh, crazy thoughts. Okay, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, you know, patience. Listen to my, my, my stuff. Okay, bye.